Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Good day, I am H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center and West Hartford Cable Access TV. We've been on summer recess. Now, if you have any questions about or comments about this program, you may contact the Preventive Medicine Center either by its phone number, 860-549-3444, or we have a website, and I think the email is info at uh, PMC, Yes, info at the pmc.org. Um, let's see, we're in an interesting political season. Uh, personally, I think we have the choice between a crook and a nut. <laughs> At least that's what everybody is saying. So um, uh, I just find it, I don't find it funny. Uh, I find it tragic that this is where the state of where we are. Uh, anyhow, uh, let's see. First up, uh, I do a lot of commenting on Facebook, uh, New York Times articles. I, I had like five comments yesterday on uh, the New York Times blog about uh, some fellow who wrote about blood pressure, uh, who is a cardiologist, uh, uh, something like uh, Sandeep, something like Jaguar. Um, and uh, his point was horrible. And I made very strong criticisms. Uh, there was a, another comment, commenter, uh, commentator, like me, from, whose name was Upstate MD. I presume that means that he uh, was in upstate New York because it was the New York Times. And he also made some very good points that uh, I wanted to say ridiculed, but, uh, and I don't want to say destroyed, but uh, somehow deciphered the nonsense that was in this, what I felt was a racist article uh, by this uh, Sandeep Jaguar MD cardiologist. So uh, obviously I'm a cardiologist and so I had comments that I thought were relevant. And I thought they were particularly good and entertaining too. So that's part of why I say to you, you might enjoy my comments on Facebook. Uh, so if you wish, friend me. 98% um, of the people who friend me, uh, I become friends with. Um, every now and then I get something that looks a little sleazy and I don't uh, friend them. But other than that, uh, sure. Now, uh, also, I'm a member of HealthTap, but I do not have that worked out. HealthTap, in case you don't know it, is a web telemedicine website. And uh, I'm a member, I'm an elite member, but that's because they're kind to me. Um, I'm not really in the habit of doing formal consults yet, uh, but people send questions and I think I do an exceptionally good job of answering the questions. Of course, you know me, my positions are 95% of the diseases we see are curable and certainly preventable, whether that's high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, diabetes, uh, kidney failure, uh, dialysis, open heart surgery, angioplasty, diverticulitis, uh, most osteoporosis, depression, anxiety, and uh, frankly, uh, I believe that the answers to that are on the 
uh, Preventive Medicine Center website, www.thepmc.org. That's put out not as advertising, that's put out as information, which is what this program is about. And if you can't recall the website, just Google my name, H. Robert Silverstein, MD, put that in Google, and what comes up will have a link to the website, and you can go there. But back to Facebook and HealthTap, uh, you can get other doctors on HealthTap, and like I said, I do answer questions. Now, uh, I just, <laughs> I'm very organized and I'm very disorganized. I suppose that's ridiculous to say because that describes everybody somewhere. And um, what I do is I sit at my kitchen table, my granite-topped kitchen table, uh, where I have my 17-inch old uh, uh, Sony Veo laptop. And Sony, as you know, broke my heart and got out of the computer business. Uh, so now in case uh, this one uh, fails, uh, I have to decide what to get. And I'm sort of torn between Microsoft uh, uh, and Lenovo and Samsung. Uh, and uh, that's it. By the way, I do have the Samsung Note 5, and the Note 7 has come out, and it is way cool looking with its double edge. Now that's hardly a reason, unless you're very well to do, to go out and buy one because there's something like six, seven hundred dollars, and that's an awful lot of money. Of course, if you're a member of uh, any of the carriers, uh, you get it built into your plan and you pay it off over the couple of years that uh, you have before you re-up and so on. So uh, I'm not up uh, until next May. That'll cool me off. But in, a, but in addition to the new Note 5, I've been considering the Sony. I was always a Sony fan, and Sony has a cell phone that is slightly a phablet, phone tablet, that is slight, which I think is inappropriate, that word, which is slightly larger than this. As I said, this is the Samsung Note 5. It's probably the same size as the Samsung Note 7, the new one. But Sony, this is, a, I think, a five and a half inch screen, and Sony has a six inch. Hang on. Hello? All right, listen, I'm doing my TV show. We'll talk later. <laughs> the trouble you can get in text messaging people. Thank goodness that's a personal text message. All right, enough of all of that. Uh, now, here's an article that I have that says, Eating Red Meat Linked to Kidney Failure Risk. It is known that animal protein, and particularly red meat, and probably because of the higher iron content of red meat over chicken or fish, chicken, turkey, or fish, or eggs, uh, that is linked to kidney disease. And as a result, uh, for many different reasons, I would not say never do anything, but I would say almost never eat red meat. Um, uh, do what you want to do, but it's the concept of understanding, this is the way I've been telling patients recently, understanding what a 401k is or what is the purpose of going to college. And the, the purpose of both of those is that you are planning ahead for a successful future. A 401k being a retirement plan that money goes into. And I say to people, why don't you just take the money and spend it? And the answer is, well, they'd like to have something when they uh, can neither work or wish to retire and enjoy themselves more. We should be enjoying ourselves on a daily basis, by the way. And if you don't, then you need to take a look around and see what you're doing. Changing the subject, I hopefully will come back. Uh, recently, an idea has been crossing my mind, and it's very relevant to almost all the conditions that I face, including people I know and myself. And that is, I read an article a number of years ago by Thich Nhat Hanh, and he is sort of one of the main meditation people. But I can't remember what the question was, even though I remember the answer. The question was something, what is life about or what is a healthy way about? 
And his answer was, and it shocked me, is bravery. Life is about bravery. Uh, the spiritual, we shall overcome, is sort of the idea of bravery. Um, a lot of people have a tough time in college or certain courses in college or at work or whatever. And the point being is it takes bravery to deal with that. Uh, one of the quotes that I have in my uh, educational handouts is, perseverance is everything. And um, uh, John Wooden, a coach for UCLA, said, uh, uh, winning is not as important as light. No, winning is, I forget, winning is, I forget how he said it, but in, he said it's more important than that. It's not about life and death, it's more important than that. And uh, of course that was humorous, but it talks about how you will get ahead. Uh, I have in my uh, examining room a quote that I just cut out of a sleazy magazine that I get. And I can't say I don't enjoy looking through it. It's called Maxim, M-A-X-I-M. But uh, there was a full page ad by Michael Jordan. And it says something like, I lost 900 games, uh, 26 times I was uh, supposed to make the winning shot the final shot to win the game and failed. Um, and then he goes on to say a little bit more that I've failed over and over and over again and that's why I succeed. Look folks, like, number one, uh, there's no dress rehearsal for life. And number two, it takes bravery, perseverance and determination to get ahead and be successful. There are many, many odds and most of which we have to face are in ourself uh, just uh, making ourselves do the essentials of what needs to be done. And that goes back to the concept of red meat and kidney disease. If you don't want kidney disease, if you want to reduce your risk of kidney disease, then avoid red meat. Of course, red meat, uh, uh, particularly what we might call cured red meat, like sausage and bacon, are linked to cancer of the colon. And uh, rather than talk about the diseases, the point of this program is that well, almost whatever you want to talk about, let's not talk about that disease or how to treat it. Let's talk about how to prevent it. And the point that I'm trying to make is that almost every condition you want to talk about is preventable. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, diabetes, cancer of the breast, uterus, colon, prostate, heart attack, stroke, angioplasty, open heart surgery. And, and uh, so how do you prevent them? I maintain that the human body is not supposed to breathe water. We're supposed to breathe clean air. What is it we're supposed to drink? Are we really supposed to drink lots and lots of whiskey or Coca-Cola, or for that matter, even coffee? Do what you want to do. It's called pay me now or pay me later. You will lose your freedom is the main point that I make to my patients. If you wish high copays, if you wish to visit the doctor often, if you wish to have surgery, angioplasty, if you wish to have stroke, if you wish to take medications and pay the copay on those and go to the doctor and be admitted to the hospital, then do things a certain way because that's what that's going to provoke. And if you don't, then this is where the bravery comes in. The bravery comes in that doing the right thing is not so much fun. It's hard, hard work. Michael Jordan worked out and practiced like crazy. Bill Gates worked very hard, dropped out of school, admittedly it was Harvard, uh, dropped out of school and worked in his garage and came up with uh, Microsoft. Uh, the same for Steve Jobs. These people, these multi-billionaires, were people who worked exceedingly hard. Now, not everyone is going to be successful no matter how hard they work, but it is a case of give it your best shot. What's that, uh, a nasty sign or halfway? Oh, okay. What's your name? Zach. Zach. Zach is running the camera today. He's got a deep voice. I wish I had. Uh, he could be sitting here doing a much better job than I can. Uh, I don't know if he knows what I know, but uh, he's taller. He's better looking. He's more muscular. He's got a great voice. Uh, Zach, you got a great future ahead of you. Thank you. Uh, he said thank you. 
Uh, anyhow, back to red meat. Uh, uh, Rich Rosenthal, who owns the Max restaurants, uh, and I go way back. One time we, we came out of, I came out of his restaurant, and um, he knew that I was sort of against red meat, and that was back in the 70s or the 80s. And uh, he said, what about chicken? And I said something very smart then. I said, red meat junior. Animal protein is not the right idea for this human biology. We're supposed to breathe clean air, not cigarettes, not e-cigarettes, uh, not uh, polluted air. We're supposed to drink clean water and weak herb tea, and that's about it. Anything once in a while. Uh, you want a cigar once in a while? You want a shot of whiskey once in a while? You may say, what about heroin or cocaine? Look, uh, that takes a little more discussion. Uh, but what is it we're supposed to eat? These teeth that come down like anvils, like all the other herbivores, that means vegetarians, like horses and goats and cows, uh, that we have an enzyme for digesting plant food, an enzyme for digesting carbohydrate in our salivary glands, whereas carnivores don't. Carnivores' jaw come down like a pair of scissors. We lack fangs and claws. Look. You can argue all day long that we're omnivores or whatever, but if you're watching this program, maybe you think I might know something and I'm trying to be a help in your life. We live in the body, essentially, of an herbivore at the 90 plus percent. What is 90% of 21 meals? 90% of 21 meals is 18 to 19 meals a week, should be ideally unprocessed foods exactly as they grow up out of the ground and in the field, organic, and then two to three meals a week could be wild-caught game, which would be wild-caught fish or free-range chicken or cage-free eggs or bison. You know, they say, oh, bison's red meat. Look, I didn't say have bison every week. Uh, <laughs> part of the problem that I have is you can trip me up on anything when I would like to say, use some common sense which of course is unheard of these days, uh, common sense. Uh, oh, I want to read, I want to change the subject. Michael Bloomberg gave the uh, graduation speech uh, at, um, I just love this thing, it's terrific. I wish it were bigger, that's one of the reasons why I'm tempted by the Sony. Uh, I think it ought to be about an inch and a half this way and an inch and a half this way, and I carry it in my pocket. Actually, it'd have to be two inches and an inch and a half. But anyhow, I'm going to put Bloomberg. 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 Mm. Okay. Here's what Michael Bloomberg said. I think it was, no. Uh, it was at the, uh, like I say, graduation ceremony for the University of Michigan this past year. The fact that some university boards and administrations now bow to pressure and shield students from these ideas through safe spaces, code words, and trigger warnings is, in my, in my view, a terrible mistake. The whole purpose of college is to learn how to deal with difficult situations, not run away from them. And I could not second it. Zach, what do you think of that? What do you think of that statement? You think it's absurd? You think it's right on? You don't have an opinion. Let me read it again. Maybe you'll collect an opinion. The fact that some university boards and administrations now bow to pressure and shield students from these ideas through safe spaces, code words, and trigger warnings is, in my view, a terrible mistake. The whole purpose of college is to learn how to deal with difficult situations, not run away from them. You got an opinion now or not? Okay, so Zach now agrees with them. And I would say that any person who doesn't agree with that uh, has a very self-protective, narcissistic, and immature personality. And you may say, how dare you talk that way? Look, there has, this political correctness thing has gone berserk. I'm not saying we shouldn't be careful in the words we choose. I'm saying we should be thoughtful. There are words we shouldn't use. There are words we can use. 
but it's gone too far. And that's what always happens. There's this pendulum that swings one way, then it swings the other way, and it swings the other way. All right, enough of that. Uh, red meat. Okay, vitamin D. Uh, I would like to make a very strong point to the viewing audience. Your vitamin D level should be between 50 and 66. Now, in a certain sense, I don't have time to debate this. I'm telling you what I know. T invitation to consider, but very much, take it or leave it. I'm not here to, to argue. I have tons of experience and tons of this and that. You might say, well, give me some of that experience. Give me that scientific information. Well, the best thing about me is subject to error. And what I mean by that is after years and years and years of whatever that I've been doing, I now kind of take information and see if it fits with what I consider to be a proper view of the world. And that's how I have arrived at this information. I have seen it said too many times that a proper vitamin D level, an ancestral vitamin D level, is about 50 or maybe a little above. If I had multiple sclerosis, I would absolutely want my vitamin D level at 66, maybe even up to 80. Uh, I have one patient who um, was taking vitamin D. He had a kidney problem, and his vitamin D level came back 113. I called him and told him to cut out his vitamin D and asked him if he was having any problem, and he said no. Uh, this whole discussion about toxicity from vitamin D, it can happen. But it is so, 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 so rare, very uncommon. Now you might say, well, if you have kidney disease or if you have this or that, and uh, if you were an endocrinologist, you'd be seeing a lot of this, or if you were a kidney doctor, you'd be seeing a lot of this. Uh, yes, it's true. I'm not those things. I'm not an endocrinologist. I'm not a nephrologist, kidney specialist. And so um, I don't have a filtered group of people. But on the other hand, I have a vast experience, and in addition, I keep my ear to the ground, and either I do or I don't have a capacity to think. And that's what you, the viewing audience, have to make up your mind about. And like I said, go to Facebook, go to HealthTap, and uh, I'm not very active on HealthTap. I'm trying to get more active, but I'm not very active on that. But Facebook, I'm regularly very active on, and so you can check out my comments. The effects of vitamin D supplementation on the diabetes test, hemoglobin A1C, and fasting glucose levels in people with high blood pressure. Now, by the way, I consider in young people high blood pressure and diabetes to be the same condition. One leads to the other, the other leads to the one, and uh, that's a matter, of course, over time. That's that same concept of a 401k. Invest and you shall be paid. So what did they find out here? They found out here that um, vitamin D supplementation in overweight people with high blood pressure with low vitamin D improved their diabetes test. Okay, uh, that's kind of a weak study, but it's a decent point, and it fits into that narrative that I was trying to describe about me. Uh, am I posing as an oracle, the Delphic oracle? Uh, in a certain sense, yes. I'm saying, you know, I've tried to be fair, screen out the good stuff. Yes, I disregard some stuff that doesn't fit my narrative. I'm using narrative over and over again today, and I almost never use that word, but uh, that's the story. Um, by the way, I'm an unpublished poet. Uh, I've published some good things. So if somebody wants to uh, uh, publish, uh, see some of my poetry, I'm available. Uh, lighter, uh, this is about weightlifting. Lifting lighter weights can be just as effective as heavy ones. Now, the key point that they get to in here is exhaustion. Five minutes, thank you. Um, you have to get to muscle exhaustion. Uh, by the way, um, no, never mind. Uh, so uh, they say th that originally it was said that you're supposed to see what is the maximum amount of weight you can pick up. Now, I don't know whether that means pick up and press. Uh, we then used to this to, let's see, 80 to 90 percent. Okay, so 
they used to use 80 to 90 percent of the maximum weight and then do uh, eight to ten times, let's see, the rest of the program by lifting 80 to 90 percent of the amount, eight to ten times until our arms and legs were affected by fatigue. So, um, but here they say do several sets so that you end up completely exhausted and can't do another one. And I think that's the main part of the story. I, have, I encourage everybody to get a personal trainer. Now you may say, well, that's expensive. Find a way to make it be least as expensive because personal trainers, even though they'll push you in the direction of animal protein, uh, personal trainers uh, uh, help guide you and get you in shape and we could all profit from that. Uh, is there more to the coronary calcium score? Oh, yes. Now that is, coronary calcium scoring is a CAT scan, a CT scan of the coronary arteries. Uh, there's an upside and a downside to that. If your score is zero, you are essentially immune, not absolutely, for the next 15 years from having a heart attack. Doesn't say anything about a stroke or developing high blood pressure or high cholesterol or whatever. But it's, you're essentially risk-free for 15 years if your coronary calcium score is zero. Yes, there are a few patients who have coronary calcium score of zero and get a heart attack, and those are due to what we call soft plaques. But in general, the rules work, and that's what I've tried to tell you all along about this human body being essentially vegan vegetarian and uh, eat all the pizza, Coca-Cola you want. That's called business on the hoof for me or some doctor. And uh, with that 401k going to college concept of what is it that you're doing and how is it going to pay off. So, um, uh, what was I, oh yes, the CT scan. Uh, and what happens is when you have had uh, high cholesterol and it builds up plaque in the uh, narrowing of the coronary arteries, over time they start to degenerate and that degeneration or healing process calcifies. And so when they do a low dose coronary uh, chest CAT scan, CT scan, they see the calcium in the heart. Well, they can also look for calcium in the aortic valve, in the mitral valve, and in the aorta itself. And that adds an extra dimension to the value. But sometimes they find a little nodule and then you have to do more CAT scans and so on. And most of those things prove to be nothing, but sometimes they do prove to be something very important. And people's lives have literally been saved. I remember I had a patient a couple of years back who was an active cigarette smoker. And um, uh, he fit the criteria of who needed a ch low dose chest CT scan. And they found a cancer on him and he had surgery and he's alive and well. Amazingly, he went back to smoking. But uh, he doesn't smoke as much as he used to, and he's pretty active, and so on and so on. Uh, anyhow, um, the low-dose coronary CT scan can help physicians decide who must have, and there's never a must, uh, who must have treatment for high cholesterol or risk getting a heart attack. So that, I told you there's a score in that. If the score is zero, you're essentially immune for 15 years. If your score is 400, you're very high risk. And if your score is 1,000, that's a trouble. So what do you do between zero and 400? And the risk is incremental and it goes up progressively. And so that is the group where you have to work with the patient and help them decide. To those patients who refuse, I put refuse statins or the new PCSK9 inhibitors, uh, which are more effective than statins and can be used with them. I recommend berberine plus red yeast rice plus fish or krill oil. Okay, uh, I guess that's it. Wind it up. Good day. God bless you all. H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center.